Sally, so what, uh, what, what can we say about the island? What are you, you going to tell us? to don't say much. We're somewhere. We're somewhere, yeah. somewhere in Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Mike Davis. These days, there's two things I'm really passionate about outdoor adventure and entrepreneurship. So we took those two things, put them together, and came up with this new show, Hustlers and Adventure. So come along for the ride. Happy to be here in Mexico, shooting our Mexican adventures. How are you feeling now that you're here? Great, I'm so happy to be here. You're so happy to be here. <laughs> I love it here, so Good. this makes me, uh, makes me very happy. So, are you excited about tomorrow? Why don't you give a quick preview about what we're gonna be doing tomorrow? Whew. Tomorrow, <laughs> uh, so uh, tomorrow night, we're gonna be heading out on a boat to our secret undisclosed location <laughs> to go surfing with apparently uh, the crazy pirate Sowie. <laughs> the seasoned pirate. The seasoned pirate. From what we know. Yeah, seasoned <laughs> pirate. <laughs> and I believe it. I believe it. I'm a little nervous, but I'm a little, I'm more excited than nervous. I think. Yeah. So first half day of our Mexican adventure and we're, we're ready to get started. Sweet. All right. We're at Mictalon Surf Shop. Uh, Mictalon Surf Shop is uh, one of the best little surf shops around. It's owned by Sawi. Sawi is a professional longboard surfer and he's also won a number of uh, recent competitions here in Mexico. How'd you get into like starting your own shop? Like when did that happen? I went back to La Cruz because that's where I study high school. I, I decided to quit from school, study myself, and start doing my own thing on tourists. Okay. And my father asked me about like, hey, what do you want to do? You want to start something or, or you want to start doing something? And I was like, I think I want to start doing something on about surfing. I think I can do it. I'm prepared. Because I used to work on boats, sailboats, the banana, the jet skis. Yeah. I, I knew enough English. I mean, I think I can do it. Okay, let's see. I don't think you're gonna survive from surfing. <laughs> and I start working on businesses on on surfing and a couple of hotels. And I introduce surfing to this business. I make a project and they approve it. And they buy me the boards and everything. And I was actually maybe the first Mexican surf school oh, wow. in Banderas Bay. I think so, with profit and everything. It took me four years to pay back, about, and now I grow it like 20 times. Yeah, yeah. Plus. Yeah. <laughs> so switching gears a little bit, you uh, you were talking a little bit about uh, kind of all the surfboards that you're collecting, and we, we saw a lot of those at your shop. So tell us uh, kind of what you're trying to do with that. You told me a little bit. Like, tell us what you're trying to do with the sort of the museum and then what are some of your favorite stories from some of those boards? So I've been a collector my whole life. I still have my toys when I was a kid. I say that already. So I started collecting suit boards like okay. 22 years ago. And I love surfing history. Yeah. My generation are the last ones that we were like real surfers <laughs> before it become an Olympic sport. Yeah. That's what I've been trying to tell the, the Mexican team, the guys I coach, because I can see that when they surf, it's like technical. Actually, one of the things that I tell them in the last contest when I was coaching us, it was like, hey, you're making a mistake. You should stop going surfing for training. You should do it like we do. We go for fun. We go with friends, take the car, travel, go serve like five days, and we don't care what kind of turn we're gonna throw on the wave. It's like, spontaneous, yeah. right? Yeah. So that's what it used to be, surfing. So it changed totally. Yeah. So I started collecting boards, and I got all eye boards that you don't even imagine. Got skip frags, for, ex for example, yeah. right? I just get one, I went into El Salvador, and I bring a 1970 David Nueva, original. I ride him. You do ride him. Oh, wow. yeah, 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 yeah. I got a D-Fing longboard, like 
65, then I used in a couple contests. Oh, wow. Actually, in, in one Mexilog, I was competing competing with uh, Del Belsi board. Okay. Del Belsi. You don't know, I, I'm sure you don't know who's Del Belsi. Yeah, but just for example, first surf shop in Manhattan Beach, this guy. Yeah. Ever. And first, like, surf team, this guy with, with Jacobs, famous Jacobs. So I got Jacobs boards. Oh, nice. One of the first uh, hobby suit boards. It's crazy. I think I got total around 300, but vintage about close to 60, I think. And some are super, 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 super cool. Rick James uh, original suit board. Yeah. A friend called me, hey, Sawi, there's a garage sale two blocks from your house, and there's two very old school suit boards that you should go and check. Okay, I will. So I went to check and I found this Rick James. Rick James is the guy that, the, my master, that taught me how to shape. I found it and I found the owner, an old guy. And I go, hey, tell me the story about this board. It's almost new. And he said, oh yeah, in the 1975, something like that. I stopped in uh, San Clemente at Rick James factory, where is I think is is where they make lost surfboards right now, the okay. mayhem boards. So, and he said, bought this board, took my truck, and drive all the way to Puerto Escondido <laughs> and surf. 1974, he said, something like that. Wow. When he started driving back, he met this girl where I live in Bucerías and got married. <laughs> And then he, he, ride the, he rides the boards for a couple more times. Then he quit surfing and save it on the storage. And then I found it. Oh, nice. And <laughs> it's crazy. That's funny. It's only so it's it's been used a handful of times. That's crazy. Not even me because I got Rick signing. Oh, cool. So and it's almost brand new, but I might write it someday. We talked a little bit about how like I came out of technology and, and software and everything. And how like I really... Uh, I'm, I'm really intrigued by people who make things like physical products and stuff. What, I guess, brings enjoyment to you in that? Or like, what do you enjoy about about making surfboards? You have your office on your house? Yeah. Your cave? Your space? Yeah. I got mine. When I start making, I begged Rick to show me how to shape and, and he said, no. Yeah. All, most of the shapers are jealous. Yeah. He said, no. But then I don't know how, I think because a friend, Kemi, Kemi Berman, photographer, I think they talk and I think maybe she said, hey, that's a good guy, he has talent. Maybe, I think so. So one day he was driving by my store again, I go, hey, Rick, you wanna show me how to shave one day? <laughs> sure, next week, <laughs> no way, <laughs> yes, in the morning. Of course, I will be there. Boom. So, we shaped the first board, little by little, boom, boom, boom. And then we ordered material, and he said, okay, if you wanna get better, we're gonna shape five at the same time. Same step, and then you're gonna do your way to do it. Okay, I'll do it. Boom, I still have board number one that I shaped. Oh, really? And we shaped five, and I was like, I think I got it, yeah? Now just practice. Every time I get in my shaping room and I close the door and I turn the AC on and put my music, it's like peace. Yeah. <laughs> So where are you right now? I'm not allowed to say, really, <laughs> where we're at, but uh, we're somewhere uh, along the Pacific coast of uh, Mexico. Uh, nice little surf break here. There's no people here. Looks like we're going to have some decent waves too, so it should be fun. Let's we'll see. All right. Well, what are your, what, if you can describe one word before the adventure about how you're feeling, what would be that word? I, yeah, I'm, I'm ready to go. This is going to be fun. What can we say about the island? What are you, what are you going to tell us? Right, don't say much. Mm -hmm. We're somewhere. We're somewhere. Yeah. somewhere in Mexico. I guess. Between Baja and Nayarit, Sinaloa. <laughs> <laughs> Mexican Hawaii. That's, right. That's it. Yeah. Nobody knows. <laughs> <laughs>
Everybody knows. I went there on that island before. I was invited to walk on the island and they took me to check. Oh yeah? See some Lots sick waves. Yeah, sick, sick waves. And do you think there's like just a bunch more waves here that need to be explored? A more. Yeah. A lot of more. You need to come yeah, out for I, like two weeks and <laughs> surf it all. Tell us about you. Where'd you grow up? Like, what? What was it like? Like, tell us. Tell us all where I story. grew up. My mom and my dad met in school in Mexico City. So they met each other, blah, 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 and then they had a baby, Saúl. They so come Saúl. My father studied economy in Mexico City. Yeah. And he started working for some. Uh, company of pesca in the country yeah and he was wearing a suit and oh. that, blah, 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 blah. that's what the, that the, what he told me is that he didn't really like it throw away his career and then study navigation my father so he turned in a really radical move moving with the family all the way to Cabo San Lucas. So I think I was like one and probably two year old. Yeah. My father started his thing in Baja. And the, and, the, and the funny thing of the story is that when we used to live there, there was nothing. Cabo San Lucas was giving land for free to the people oh, because geez. they want Cabo San Lucas to start growing up. And my father never accepted, something happened. They lost everything in one hurricane. They lost everything on the second hurricane, his boat, the camper, the, my mom's job, she was working for a jewelry shop, something like that. And they decided to move to Puerto Vallarta. Okay. Yeah. So, and I remember the night I started surfing when I was in Baja. When I was like five, six years old on a boogie board because I remember my father used to take surfers on a pickup to the search box Yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, and I remember that when we show up to Banderas Bay, we bring a surfboard with us. But, mm -hmm. what I remember is that then people said, no waves here. No waves in Bayarta. Oh, really? And I was like, okay, well, no more surfing. No. Until when I, when we moved from La Cruz, then I, I hear stories about people surfing, Tartin, the surfer, the best surfer of La Cruz. And, and then a friend, when I was 12 years old, 12 years old, came to my house. I was living in Vallarta then, not in La Cruz anymore. And invited me to go surf. Like, hey, Sawi, uh, I used to be a, uh, on those days, I was a skateboarder and uh, BMX. Oh, yeah. I, I was starting. Like the I, tricks I, or the racing? Uh, tricks. Okay, yeah. I, st I was starting, I got my skateboard. I remember that I built my own bike, blah, 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 and I was like ready, right? I'm trying to put all my energy on this. And 
This guy came and hey, so how he want to go serve? We won a competition a couple weeks ago. What was that? It was actually a super cool three months. Three months. So it's like a it was like a series. Three months. I start with the selectivo to do the Nayarit uh -huh. team. And we made it, me, my wife, my son, my wife, and me. Okay. We went on the finals, so we qualified for the nationals. We went to the nationals and we did the podium. All of them. All three of you? Yes. Nice. So I didn't want, I got second and third. My son got third on shortboard and first on longboard. My wife got fourth on shortboard. And then we went to El Salvador and I got fifth, but I got enough points and I won the. Won my cup, the the circuit, okay. first time ever in Mexico. Nice. Then we came back and we went to the local contest in Sayulita and he made it for the very first time to the finals with oh, the nice. adults. Oh, he nice. actually beat me on the first heat against me, <laughs> ever. <laughs> yeah. So awesome. we got, ¿Cómo quedamos en Sayulita? Yo quedé, I got second. Y yo cuarto. And he got fourth on the final. ¿Cuántos hits eran? Cinco. See, and we just went to San Blas and I won shortboard, I won longboard, he won shortboard and he got on the final again on longboard and got second. Nice. This thing, this kid's going to be a monster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Super fun. That's awesome. Actually, I was, I was going to quit, but this little just kid... Just quit competing? Yeah, I was like, ah, I think I'm done. But then my son has been like super into it. Uh -huh. And I think I'm gonna keep doing it for a couple more years. Just so he can, him. I can train him. Yeah. And he's doing pretty good. He likes it. And yeah, why? Why do you want to quit? Forty-two. <laughs> <You're> young. <laughs> I got a yacht now. I gotta work on my yacht. Yeah. Got a nice sunset too. Oh yeah. Best sunset in Banderas Bay. Oh, yeah. Punta de Mita. The best sunsets in Punta de Mita. Yeah. Pink. My favorite color, pink. <laughs>